satisfied except by you, the true and living bread. To whom, Lord, shall we go? Though far from you we stray, will searching find a path more sure than you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge that we have sinned and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. Oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve, the gods your father served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord.
Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. 
The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many of Jesus' disciples who are listening said, this saying is hard, who can accept it? This gospel today concludes the series of gospels we've been reflecting on, Jesus' teachings on the Eucharist, that the body and blood um, of Christ really becomes present. Uh, it is his flesh given for the life of the world. He gives us this sacred meal here at the Mass the bread and wine which represent gifts of ourselves are transformed into his very body and blood. And it is something that can be difficult to accept. There are other passages in scriptures that also at times can be difficult and perhaps our second reading from Ephesians uh, can be experienced that way. I am reminded of a story that um, I heard growing up often. It seemed like about once a year Monsignor P.J. O'Sullivan pastor of St. Joseph's Parish in Wenatchee would tell the same story about a couple who loved to fight. I don't remember all the particulars, but I do remember how the story ended. Oftentimes they had to resolve their conflicts by playing a game of rock and paper and scissors. They're out in the middle of a lake in a rowboat and they're arguing and they get so caught up in the argument that they fail to see that their boat has sprung a leak. And uh, it gradually fills with water and then the boat and a couple disappear beneath the water. And then suddenly a fist shoots up, scissors. And then another fist shoots up, rock. And of course, we, even though we heard it every year, we laughed. Uh, and you know, it catches something that maybe is a reality of life. Conflict is inevitable in marriage. And the way we learn to resolve our conflicts uh, we can resolve them well. It can actually help to strengthen marriage. This reading from Ephesians does uh, provide us a profound reflection on the meaning of Christian marriage, what the church views uh, as one of the seven sacraments for those who are baptized uh, Christians. Now, um, sometimes it can be difficult for, to get past the first few lines, at least for 50% of us. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands. The husband is the head of the wife. That sounds like a good deal for men, doesn't it? But then we read a bit further. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over. Didn't Jesus give himself up for the church by being nailed to a cross? Are men willing to give even their lives for their for their spouses. One commentator offering advice to engaged couples on Twitter wrote this and directed to women, marry yourself a man who thinks he owes you his own death, not in some grand romantic gesture, but in a thousand daily choices for your good over his preferences. And then if we return to verse 21, all of you, brothers and sisters, be subordinate one another out of reverence for Christ, we see that this is really meant to apply to all of us. And it's meant to open our ears. Certainly St. Paul reflects the social order of his time. He doesn't want Christians to rock the boat. What's most important is for the Ephesians and for Christians for all time to 
deeply understand how Christian marriage reflects the love of Christ for his church. St. Paul, in speaking of cleansing, is talking about baptism and the spiritual rebirth that takes place in this sign of the indwelling love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the person who is baptized. If we reflect a bit on the Trinity, we can do so in terms of marriage as well. The eternal love of Father and Son bears fruit in bringing the Spirit into the world. The love of husband and wife bears fruit often by bringing children into the world, but in many other ways as well. Then we read on in Ephesians, and St. Paul quotes the book of Genesis, recalling, recalling God's plan for man and woman from the beginning of creation. The two shall become one flesh. Again, he compares this to the mystery of Christ in the church. We are the body of Christ. We are all connected. The joys and the hopes, the griefs and the anxieties of others are in some sense ours as well. A great mystery indeed, one that in reality we grow into throughout our lives. And finally, the next verse in Ephesians, which is not in our reading today, states this. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. If we recall again the beginning of the passage, everyone be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. We can see that these words apply to both men and women, calling them to be signs of unity and of self-giving love, so that marriage truly is a sign of God's love in our world. Together now, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord has ears for our cry, and trusting all our cares to him, we voice our prayers to the Father. For disciples of Jesus persecuted today for their beliefs, that they may be strong in faith and steadfast in compassion, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For nations crushed by debt, that the community of nations help restore them to financial health, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have suffered loss from acts of violence, and for a world free from terror and war, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those in constant agony, that they receive effective pain relief and know God's closeness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community of, say, of the Diocese of Yakima, that they may that they respect one another's differences and unite in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, help us to face the challenges of daily life with confidence in your love and protection. Through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, 
Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And as so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. They call thee therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The earth will be satisfied by the work of your hands, O Lord. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Search.